idea of having a burner phone. I've never had a burner phone in my life, but I, I love the idea of having one just because it makes me feel like I'm I'm a spy. <laughs> how, about, how about you've been married to your wife for like 15 years and she just, now she comes up with these weird, exotic sexual techniques you've never heard of before. Oh. Never, where did she learn that? Internet. Yeah, the internet. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, YouTube. So that, that could be an indicator. <laughs> that could be an indicator, Dave. Or she has a secret lingerie stash that you haven't seen, but you That's found good. it under the bed. Yeah. Who's she dressing up for? Oh, thanks. You're making a, you're ruining things for me. <laughs> now I'm going back and I'm like, ah, I never knew she did that. And, and this is this is where Nathan here's, comes here's in. Here's my oh, question. Okay, is he go got, you've been married for a while, right? Yeah. Okay, so your wife comes in. She's got some new sexual techniques. You think to yourself, she's cheating on me. Do you mind if they're good sexual techniques? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. At this point in my life, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Keep keep going. I was going to say this. Is, this could be one, and, and I've seen this before. Let's say you have a older female in her 40s. Yep. And she's stepping out mm-hmm. on her husband or her boyfriend with a kid in his 20s. Oh. Now, kids in their 20s speak differently. Come on. So a lot no, of times, a, a, a astute husband will be able to pick up on how she's speaking now. So, Nathan, if you were dating a 40-year-old... <laughs> how, how my, you, wa- my wife just keeps talking about Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> yeah, well, she what, bought a PlayStation. That would be that would be a giveaway if she talks about Fortnite and she's yeah. What else? What else is kind of um, you know in in your twenty year old oh, community? Oh, Nathan? TikTok, TikTok. But yeah. now the forty year olds are actually yeah, they're, they're, they're TikTok. dancing on TikTok like yeah. the twenty year olds. And that, that's and I you know something I've gone to domestics and the husband has says I knew she was screwing around with someone in his 20s because she just changed the way she was speaking. Wow. She was saying things like, where the hell did you learn that phrase? Who do you know that who, who do you know that talks like a 20-year-old other than your boyfriend you haven't told me about? Right, <laughs> right. Wow, that's a dead giveaway. Yeah, you, but you gotta be you got to be on your toes on that one, Radigan. You gotta yeah, you got to be, gotta be paying attention to, yeah. your, to your wife and the way she's talking, and that, I, that would never get me. The next <laughs> on our list, though, this is right in my wheelhouse, missing money. Missing oh, yeah. money. Yeah, that would be. Money's missing. You're thinking to yourself, well, how, how do we lose this? Uh, yeah, where's this $1,000 go? Right. Well, you know, what's this credit card bill for a hotel up in New Hampshire? And that's another well, thing. A credit card bill for a hotel is kind of a dead giveaway. But if, if, you're, if someone you're with has, you know, obviously a husband or wife, you'd have access to credit card information. If they have seven or eight credit cards, unless you do a scan of all their credit card bills, you're not going to know that they rented a room up in North Conway, no. New Hampshire. You're not going to know that. No. Yeah. So, I mean, you could know that if you were inquisitive. Inquisitive minds want to know. Remember that. I, I was. Tell me the story about the car wash. Oh, uh, have you heard the car wash story? I don't think I have. Oh, this is a great one. But this has got to do with, I don't know. It's just like, you know what it is? It's just like the movie where there's a perfect plan. Mm-hmm. And and there's but it's never a perfect plan because something always goes wrong, and it can happen in real life too. Absolutely. And this one, you've told me about this, and Nathan, you're gonna this is gonna be a cautionary tale for you because this is something you don't want to do when you cheat on your spouse. Yeah. Okay. So we got a call. It was a Sunday morning, nine in the morning. It was it, the call was a disturbance at the car wash. So we roll up and we see this very nice. Thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar BMW. So the husband and wife went there to detail their car. They're cleaning the car. The wife is cleaning the back seat. She's vacuuming, and she sees a condom wrapper, not a used condom in the back of the car, like if we went to Nathan's no. car right now. Yep. yep, all dried up, but just the half of a Trojan say, where, condom where, wrapper. Where, where is he going to get? Where is he going to get a condom? No offense, but I think you have a... a, a I don't wear condoms. <laughs> I collect STDs like they're Pokemon. <laughs> so the, the wife is vacuuming the back seat of the car, and she sees a condom wrapper. Half of the condom wrapper. Yeah. So it's her husband's car. How would that have gotten there? Yeah. So they start arguing. All right. He doesn't know what to say. Yeah. Very well. He was a doctor. He's a doctor. He's in his. He's, he's in a his, doctor he's in his thirties. Very he's a, wealthy. What type of a doctor? I don't want to give the answer. Is he a doctor he, of he, love? He literally could be listening. Is he a doctor of love? 
I, <laughs> he's not a good have, doctor. Does alone. he have? Does he have the cure you're thinking of? <laughs> I, uh, so we we get there and she's yeah. yelling and screaming and he's alluding to the fact that she jumped in the car and chased him around the the uh, car wash with it. Now, <laughs> he, after a couple of minutes, he denied that. He goes, oh, "I didn't say that. She didn't do anything." He said he didn't say it after he said it. After he said it, yeah, he, I didn't say it. that, and because uh, we, because he, he could have been, well, he could have been arrested, right? And he didn't say she was chasing me around, and honestly, my legs, my legs were spent. After Luckily, last I'm night. fast, and she didn't get me and dump me in the river. But yeah, that's because people make mistakes. Obviously, yeah. he was having sex well, in the car. That's a crazy mistake to make, and I'll tell you why. He must have been drunk. Either that, or he so? does it so much that it just common practice for him that he just he well, that might up. be right yeah. it might be from i don't know to me to me it seems like and i don't have the experience opening condom wrappers so you two do but <laughs> it seems to me like you know when you're ripping into two pieces versus when you're ripping into one piece yeah you can figure both of them should be out the window yeah yeah well you don't want to litter and, uh, you, know, you don't want to litter enough, the but you should at least get rid of both both you know litter. the backstory of this the backstory yeah. of this is that the girl involved her father was a very well-known school official back in the day, 20 years ago or so, whatever it was. Very well-known yep. in the community. All right. So we took care of that, and everyone went home happily. I don't know if they were st- I have no clue if they're still married or not married. I'm assuming she might have just took it on the chin and... Because he was loaded, brother. He was this guy was loaded oh, with money. If Maybe he was, she if just he was that, if he was that rich, I'm sure half of what he had was plenty. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I never heard about this one before. But I, I we talked about this. Do people really use the cops to get info about their spouses? Oh, absolutely, they do. They do it quite often. I can probably think I, I work the midnight shift a lot. It's usually on midnights because what happens is... This is, by the way, the greatest thing ever if they do this. Well, they do it and they get away with it once in a while. They That's, absolutely it's, do. It's, it's, it's exceptional. Well, I mean, it's I mean, exceptional. It's, it's like exceptional. saying... It's like, it's like calling... Oh, go ahead. Finish the explanation. All right, yeah. Sorry, so what, what, what they'll do is usually between like midnight and five in the morning because what usually happens is let's say a husband calls at like two in the morning. He'll say... Uh, has there been any accidents in your city? Is anyone under arrest? This is my wife's name or my girlfriend's name. And we'll say, no, she, she's not in our cell block. And he'll go on to say that she went out with the girls after work. She left at six. She hasn't she been home. Be home. He's worried. Yeah, he, he's worried. Yeah. And we're like, well, I mean, I hate to break, break the bad news here, but she's probably hanging out with someone. I don't know who that <laughs> someone may is that, be. Is that what they say? No, I would never, I, we would never say that. We would never antagonize the situation. Yeah. But people call and they want us to kind of give them the information and what they'll do is if we say no they may call back a few hours later and want to report her missing or him missing right so the way they've called once they call they're once. concerned yep and which just sounds a lot like like um yeah you don't want to admit look i'm a jealous i'm a jealous crazy man you want to say i'm concerned yeah for uh, I think a lot right. of people legitimately are concerned, but then there's the other flip side who's just a jealous crazy man. Okay, then the jealous crazy man. So we'll say this. Nathan, you played the jealous crazy man for now. Yeah, yeah okay. All right, and we'll, uh, we'll do it. So you've been home. You're cheating, you're, you're cheating no good, low-down Jolene of a wife is out. Yeah. Uh, a cat, cat, what do they call it? What is it, cat, cat, uh, alley cat She's alley cat? No, I don't even. I've never heard of that. But she's, been, Dave. she's been alley catting, uh, <laughs> but you don't. You you don't know any of this. You're like, oh, it's just my crazy. She's an animal. indoor cat. She's <laughs> she's so anyway. So so you suspect this thing, but you so you call the police first because she's just not home, and you're just worried to death. Do you think this is it? Is worried to death, or you think it's fighting in her? Probably urge. half and half. Fighting in her. It's half and half. All right. Do you think it's a scam at this point? So you don't think it's a scam at this point? No, but w- what happens is when we say no, no one's been arrested. Hold on. I just yes. want to do, I just want to let Nathan do, ne- worried Nathan on the phone. Oh, hello, officer. I'm so worried. <laughs> What's wrong? Your wife hasn't come home yet? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> she should have been home. I'd like to file a missing persons. She's okay. missing. See, what's I'm the, so worried. Wow. Yeah, I'm so worried. It sounds like he's so worried he took a whole bottle of sleeping pills. <laughs> so, yeah, once, once they once they want to file a missing persons report, then what we'll usually do is 
we'll, we'll file that. And then now we're going to have to locate the cell phone. So we'll go okay. through a process of trying to locate the cell phone. And if we can locate it, the location where it's at, she um, better be at the bottom of that river. Yeah, she better be working late. It's like when well, you used to—that's what you used to tell your kids. You better be—you better be dead in a ditch because if you come home late, I'm going to kill you. That's the old days, right? back of the good old yeah, days. Yeah, so we're not going to give that information out if, in fact, we have a location. We'll send either if it's if it's a location where we're working, we'll send it from offices from that community. If not, we'll call another community to to do a well-being check on that person and then assuming we make contact or someone makes contact then we'll call the husband or concerned spouse and let mm -hmm. them know but we typically try not to give them a location right away because we don't know if they're going to go over there and it's going to be like a boyfriend's house because i have a story about you that. have a story when about i was that? a rookie when i was a rookie you're a rookie wow i was a rookie i was on for probably wow. i don't know six to eight months really and i got dispatched to a call and the dispatcher said, could you check the well-being? This was like 2 in the afternoon of an 18, 19-year-old girl. Did they have radios back then? They had radios, yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> and uh, the, the uh, premise was that she wasn't feeling well. Her boyfriend was concerned about her. She might have taken some pills. Sure. So I, I went to the house. I talked to her. Yeah. Everything was fine. And she mentioned, well, he's not my boyfriend. He's my ex-boyfriend okay and then there was a, a older lady at the house i spoke to her and i guess the house she was at was her new boyfriend okay so i called back on the radio and i said yeah she's here everything's fine they called him and he used us to verify that she was at the new boyfriend's house okay 24 hours later a uh -oh. community uh, uh -oh. two doors down a community a couple of doors away called us and said hey did you deal with michael smith the other night and his ex-girlfriend yeah, yeah, we did. He said, well, he just beat the shit out of her. Ooh, <laughs> oh. And we'd like to thank you for uh, giving him that information that she was out screwing around on him. Right. So that right. Although that she, wasn't even, she wasn't even doing that. She had a new boyfriend. She was at, yeah, because yeah. we verified that she was at the new, well, he, he, was, he wasn't letting her go. He was the obsessed old boyfriend, right. you know, crazy domestic kid. That's awful. So, yeah, I That's actually awful. use that story. So if you're a rookie cop and you're listening I use that story. I will tell that story whenever a new cop comes on the department. Right. And I'll say, hey, people will use the police to get certain information on a boyfriend, a girlfriend, and we can verify that they're out screwing around. Then we're kind of like, no, we're not complicit yeah. in it, but it, it, we really look unprofessional when we do that. Right, right. Well, it's, it's, it goes against the mission <laughs> to, protect the, yeah. the, to protect part of the mission. Uh, it's crazy to me. Well, I, let's put it this way. It's, I mean, you're calling the cops to get the help to find the girlfriend, and then you're going to commit the crime. It's like calling him in advance and saying, hey, I'll be committing a crime later on. <laughs> he uh, could be building an alibi also. Oh, like I was yeah, concerned. I'm concerned that she hasn't come home yet. Right. Why would you suspect me in her disappearance? Right. Yeah, there's a lot of variables that come into play. Well, you that's just, if you're planning to, to murder. Obviously, in this case, <laughs> it was a crime of passion, and he was just, or, or here's what it seems like to me. This guy was just crazy with jealousy, had a suspicion that it was a certain person's house, got you to confirm the conf uh, suspicion yep. for him. And then proceeded to you probably go. hurt hurt. I succeeded him. in my first call out in the street all by myself. I did a hell of a job. That was your first call? No, it wasn't. But uh, it was. Yeah, I was on for six or nine months. Yeah, probably probably six or nine years. But yeah, well, okay, <laughs> fine, fine. Some of these. Here's something else that happens, and 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 this goes back to high school. You say to yourself, "Why is she with him? Because he's a whack job." And I know yeah. it goes the other way too. Why is why is he with her? Yeah. Because she's a whack job. But generally, when we're looking at, at, at least when I look at it, I think you see a guy who's just whacked out and, and clearly violent. Yep. Clearly violent. And you say to yourself, what is wrong with her? Oh, or sometimes you see somebody who's clearly an alcoholic. And you think, why is this woman going out with this guy? Oh, yeah. You and see it, it all the time. It, and it turns out and to be. Sometimes it turns out to be deadly. Yeah. There was a case a few years back where husband and wife, yeah. the husband was known to have some mental health issues okay. with, throughout the marriage. And at some point during the marriage, he found out that his lovely bride was screwing the neighborhood. 
Right? The entire neighborhood. Not the entire. Well, there's only a few houses on the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. The yeah, screwing her best friend next door by the name of Todd. I'm just making that up. Okay. I'm just trying to throw a name She to just it. had sex with everybody in the cul-de-sac. And he, <laughs> this is, which, by the way, is, is good because it's much better than the old one of having sex with everybody in town. Yeah, there you go. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 